Pramila, Sarika, Sean, everyone at the Brain Foundation, from the entirety of my heart, this is Zenzi. I have a unique perspective on autism that I believe can shift things dramatically. This is my dog, Zanzi. Have you ever met an autistic canine? Much of my theory is ported through her actual behavior, which says maybe the prefrontal cortex, clearly involved, no anti-prefrontal cortex in my theory, but perhaps not evolutionarily, the source of the problem. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very keen on the cerebellum these days. Um, I, this is my thing. Um, Norman Doidge, um, The Brain's Way of Healing. I just read this book over the last weeks. Um, my entire theory presages, presages, predates, but it's all here. Um, he's uh, MD, Columbia. Yeah. Um, psychiatrist, psychoanalyst. Um, it's, it, it's about bioelectromagnetism, what I like to call and have my intellectual property, which I am willing to um, share and endow the Brain Foundation with. Philosophical hypothesis of bioelectromagnetism creates an entercation empire that I like to call hashtag breaking brilliant. Whereas those men made meth, this woman wakes wisdom. And one of the key concepts is placebo tools. Sound. A lot of the um, ancient wisdom traditions, acupuncture, Ayurveda, these things work on the bioelectromagnetic aspect of human functioning. I believe and we've got plenty of clinicians and researchers for me to work with and validate the theory before we go public, if I can get a grant to um, room board stipend. Keep me alive. Tomorrow I will have, is my three year, three month anniversary as a homeless person living in my vehicle with my dog, both of us autistic. We are one organism. I believe if we can afford to hire a videographer, get me some assistance. I can get me reversing my autism symptoms, changing my body physically and mentally without and this is a challenging thing to say to you because I know medicines are important, but I don't need them. I had to had to learn as a child to learn to manage autism, sensory overwhelm every day without anybody believing me. It's um, 11 a.m., the three days at the conference, and then yesterday I made a friend, one of the autistic moms locally here in the Bay Area, with a son who is in a care home, 11 years old. We, we were talking and, and understanding and getting some of that data. I'm certain that there is severe sensory overwhelm in these kids who are non-communicative, who have all of these problems. How we unpack it, what the what the... I believe, you know, if you think evolutionarily, and evolutionary logic is another one of the concepts in my intellectual property as a philosopher. Again, Carnegie Mellon degree philosopher. I was just forced out of the public library. And um, I, I have a um, strong ally in the director, but she's not there today. And I ended up basically, it would be categorized by everyone else's storming out, but it was literally, I had to run away because somebody came and sat down next to me. I'd been in there for an hour charging my phone and, and the chemicals that the person, I mean, they were off gassing, you know, we were social distanced um, and it was around a corner. So people, treat me as though I'm having a psychological problem when I'm having a physiological problem. And the only answer was I had to move. I had to leave. The person was talking loud, making noise in the public library. Something could be said to them, said, said to them, see, I get, there goes the um, languaging. I'm good at this. I am good at um, narrating what's occurring to me. I have 
in no uncertain terms, I believe my intelligence, which tracks pretty well with the zeitgeist in, in many ways of, of um, the cohort of, of collaborators, the, the PhDs, the researchers, um, but interoception is my genius. That's how I can self-manage. And to get this in a documentary that I, I, have, I can envision it being a cans quality documentary because the sense of smell and taste evolutionarily as mammals, we started out very close to the ground, understanding the world via our nose and our tongues. This is wired directly into the brainstem, into the cerebellum. And one of the the, the, the interventions that very well documented, it's um, UW-Madison, it, it's a tongue stimulator, electric bioelectromagnetism stimulator on the tongue goes directly to the cerebellum. They had all these theories, but essentially it's basically the electrical impulses. And then it goes to the cerebellum and it goes through the whole brain. I've got all kinds of ideas and capacities. I need somebody to pay to put me in an Airbnb at Stanford. I will dedicate at least 50%. I'll have a, I have a number of deliverables. Um, again, I was supposed to be in the library charging my phone, which is very near close to collapsing after the conference and all of the things. And I'm very close to collapsing. My dog, hyperactive, very close to collapsing. <laughs> Let me, let me give her a treat, let me, let me, th which is what this, this tongue thing does and, and why my morbid obesity was neuro, neuroprotective. I was electrically salience-wise stimulating the tongue, which gives me control of um, the homeodynamic balance of my brain waves. Fascinating how the human body works, eh? So it would be really great. I'm going to be get, quick, quicken this up here. Um, it's very hard for me to talk. I, my, my brain does not, pour, the, the, this is how much text I can see on this phone and my devices planned obsolescence. I mean, it's, it's just nonstop, the lack of resources that um, basically have kept me stuck, even though I have so much to offer to the world. It's the philosophical hypothesis of bioelectromagnetism. I'm quite certain billions of dollars, life-centric thinking. I've got um, a proprietary brand of thinking that addresses climate change. See, because if we can get some data on smell, sensitivity, and autism, we go directly to a medical case for focusing on global warming, which we can't have. Nobody's, nobody's listening to the science. Nobody's paying attention. Um, if you can locate me in the Palo Alto area, I'm going to go to Stanford Professor Robert Sapolsky. Um, this is his memoir, uh, um, but he's recently written a book. First was Behave, the best and the worst of human behavior, and it's deterministic. And I'm a hundred percent we're we're together on that. Um, well, this is this is my shit sticked here. My this is um, hashtag Socratic Improv. This is this is um, the performance modality I had to invent under the umbrella of stand up philosophy because I don't want to write a paper. I want I want to work with researchers. I want to you know have webinars with clinicians, but the whole world needs to get involved if it actually is climate change that is causing all of this, and if autism can be redefined. Um, and additionally defined as environmental trauma, as a, my comment I spoke after Dr. Gaitanis's talk, um, he seems to be precisely the right person. He's got kids to care for, but if I could work with him, I, this theory, we'd have a lot. Um, also, uh, plants are conscious. This is new science um, from Spain. And the whole point here, well, let me let me just keep going. This is actually very good. Um, the Dalai Lama, who runs the Mind and Life Institute, so my theories of consciousness are absolutely, and now this person is backed, like, why, why are they so close to my car? I don't understand. Now they're using these cameras, and it literally freaks me out that the person is go was going to hit me while I'm trying to speak to you. Oh geez, I can't even find the, the one book I'm looking for. It would 
be the case, it would be at the bottom. I have a library of about a dozen books here. The um, synthesis, the philosophical th synthesis, all of the scientists and experts are down in silos, whereas what my unique beyond, sorry, I am losing the capacity to speak. Um, Greta Thunberg, the climate book. We are not solving this. We, we don't know how to process climate change. I have ideas and answers as a philosopher for that. Also, here's, here's the money shot. What if I'm the missing generation of autistic female between Temple Grandin, Hannah Gadsby, and Greta Thunberg, and we could, as the Brain Foundation, do a little video, whatever, and get an interview with the four of us more about lived experience. We can get questions from the parents. They can send in a donation for $500 to get make sure their question gets asked from the clinicians. Um, and that video can go out to go viral to bring in money to the Brain Foundation to pay for the money that I'll need. Um, just because everything. Give people money. The UBI situation. We'll, we'll figure out how to do the chronic... People with chronic conditions having to navigate the government, talking to my new friend um, from the conference, what she has to go through for her son in the care home, it's preposterous. She's losing her health because... And finally, back to environmental trauma, I've ported my theory through Bessel van der Kolk, great, you know, the body keeps the score, Autism is more a physiological dysfunction. Of course, body-mind unity. That's another one of my, about consciousness and being a philosopher. And the myth of normal, Dr. Gabor Mate. I'm looking to talk to everyone and I'm looking to start and until y'all are satisfied, use autism as the test case. It's, it's body, mind, unity, and we have to rethink it, and we have to redefine it, and we have to get everyone working together because it's gonna be quality of life interventions. If autism triggers via sensory overwhelm, especially smell, we know, we know the sound does, um, but we've just mostly atrophied smell. Okay, I'm hitting my 15 minutes for Sean. This has been all of it very quickly. As my autism symptoms can be addressed by me being in a home with proper nutrition, that's basically what I need, to hibernate, to fast, and to have a um, ketogenic diet, I will introduce cannabis as an adult, and I have a good theory for that. It's literally, the theory of the endocannabinoid system comes in. I am a fast global thinker. Autism has gifted me. This is one of my traits of autism, and this has been my hyperlexia. Please pardon how fast my brain has to go because my body's ready to shut down. Thank you so much for existing. Thank you for choosing a Silomar. I do not think I could have even managed to travel to Monterey to be at the conference for many reasons. The life of an autistic human has a many more constraints than we're aware of. There's so much I have to offer. If we can sort of get me a tab, just get me some basic, my Maslow's met, then over, you know, course of a few weeks, I will be able to um, do more typical pitches, although they're still going to be awfully creative and they're still going to be highly autistic. Thank you again this weekend. Saved my life. And I'm ready to pay back that debt. Harmony. It's been Zenzi. My payroll name is Deb Helfrich. My website is debhelfrich.squarespace.com. I haven't had access to change it for a while. It was focused on the entertainment aspect of um, doing one woman monologues, Socratic improv, stand up philosophy giving this IP to the public, the intellectual property of it, and then making a whole stream of, um, you know, well, Deb Talks. Dynamic, energetic, brilliant. These are talks to come out of, of um, insights worth performing. That's the pivot. And it's very much a Khan Academy style 
idea. Oh, look at this timing. Harmony. 